Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Santa! Oh my God! Ho, oh, oh. <laughs> ho. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Who the heck are you? All these like little hairs keep getting stuck in my mouth and it's kind of gross, but I'm gonna do it for the video. So we're gonna just put this bad boy back on. My name is Macro and today we're gonna be going over my brand new tutorial on Moody Good and Leo Tricks track, Crack Shot. So as you know, Christmas is right around the corner and with this tutorial, I wanted to actually be able to give back to you guys. So before we get into the tutorial and everything I'm gonna show you guys today, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all the support on the channel and all the videos. And today I'm gonna to be asking you guys to leave within the comment section who your favorite artist was of 2019 who absolutely killed it in your book. And I'm gonna be going through all of the comments on Christmas day, and I'm gonna pick one person to send a folder of all of the Ableton racks that I use as a cool little Christmas gift, you know? So comment down below who your favorite artist of 2019 was. As always, if you guys enjoy the video and learn something today, make sure that you leave a like, it helps the channel out a lot. If you're new here, I hope that you subscribe and turn the notification bell on to keep up to date with me whenever I post new videos and you can also check in on the community tab page where I can post polls and ask you guys a ton of other questions. But enough with my little holiday spiel, um, we're gonna jump straight into Ableton now. All right, so now that we're out of that whole Santa nightmare beard thing that was going on, we're in Ableton now. So uh, here's what I made. <laughs> Okay, so that was with the Moody Good track playing on top of it. So it has like this cool, like rickety, whiny noise. I don't know. It kind of sounds like a sample that was taken and manipulated. So I try to do stuff with Serum. I feel like a lot of it comes from sample manipulation. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of both today. So this is it without the track playing under it. So I think it's pretty close. It's not exact, you know, that'd be crazy if I can make it exact, just like Moody Good. But uh, we'll go through all the different bases one by one, and then I'll show you some audio manipulation that I think he did. And I think you can hear my dogs in the background. <laughs> they're really hyped on this video. So, you know, <laughs> damn, they're growing crazy. So let's just get into it before they bark more. This is gonna be like a supporting part to it. <laughs> So there's gonna be kind of like an under like layer that I put on every fourth of a bar, I think it is. So we've got serum right here. And I know I gotta move serum to the right because my face is gonna be on the left. So I'm gonna take all the other like effects, all that stuff off, we'll go one by one. So that way you guys can hear exactly what's happening. We got the saw rounded to square wave table. And make sure that you guys have headphones or you're listening on um, studio monitors so you can hear anything that's really low in frequency as well. But we have this, this is like the foundation of it. And then we have FM from B going on with this J and O wave table. And I have the sync going up so that way it's giving it more like of a higher timbre to the sound. But one important thing that actually helped me a lot with doing this is with this sync knob, when you bring it up every three, five, seven, and nine percent, that's like it going up a third, a fifth, a seventh, or a ninth harmonic. So those are good points to like bring the sync knob up to, to get different sounds out of. So this one's at five, but if I bring it down, it'll still be harmonically all right with it. And then a seventh. And when you go in between it, it like you'll hear it. And 
like it sounds so much better when it actually gets to the the three five seven or nine so if you guys are sound designing i would suggest doing that if you're using fm and sync together and then i brought the uh this coarse pitch knob up 1.13 to kind of get it closer to the sound after that a high notch filter so this is going to give it like that cool like resonant tone and I have LFO 1 doing all of the work to all the different LFO routing so that's controlling wavetable, FM, the level, cutoffs, resonances and frequencies within the oscillators and the filter and then making sure that you keep this random phase knob all the way down just so that way the wavetables aren't playing at you know different intervals within itself it's all starting at the same point point. and then for the LFO I have it like this quick shark tooth fin and uh, it's at 1 4th with trigger BPM and anchor on so effects we've got let's see hyper dimension first makes it a little wider diode 2 LFO is controlling the drive so it's going to crush it a little bit with the distortion phaser so in a lot of my other videos I talk about phaser it's like my favorite thing to do to sounds when I'm processing it gives it a really crunchy monstery feel to it which is really cool and then chorus some delay it makes it like a little bit wider at the end as uh, like ping pong delays you know do <laughs> but the feedback it's uh, really really low like seven or eight percent left and right's going at the same uh, time I guess they're linked after that we've got EQ so it's giving it more of like a little growl texture to it from using the LFOs and the EQs like hitting one going up and one going down in resonance and the reverb filter so this is going to give it a lot of its sound that like that higher pitch noise kind of sounds like a hard trap link but I feel like for the the track he was going for something that was all like like higher frequency based and I don't know he worked with Leo tricks on this like and Leo tricks does some crazy stuff that little crazy Aussie multi-band compression and some reverb and then I don't think I was doing anything for like the the tuning it was just all LFO work but yeah that's the first one that's the one that goes like this and those everything's in E also so you guys can see the uh, the MIDI for it so that's how it sounds in context I just turned these off so that way you guys can hear it better and then of course it's got yo man so dry wet is all the way up just turn the feedback down to 40 percent and I left this at where it was. I didn't need to touch it at all. All right, so now we're going to base number two, this guy. So it's a like interesting flow that he had and I had never done a flow like that before. So this was pretty cool. Of course, I got a lot of modulation going on. So same thing as the last patch, we'll go through it. But honestly, all I did was just do like the same thing I duplicated it and changed just a couple of things that's all it is so I'm just gonna keep all of these um, effects on it but for the first wavetable I used a different one this one's FFT squeal it's in digital <laughs> so the macro is going to the course uh, pitch as opposed to the last patch, there was nothing going to it. It was just tuned up. So this one's tuned up, but I'm also manipulating it within the modulation. 
So with this, I have the sink at about three. So this is giving a little bit of a different timbre than the last one. And the octave is also up one. And LFO, uh, the shape has just changed a little bit, but um, it's pretty much like the same kind of technique. High notch filter doing the same thing as the last patch. And then we've got all the effects. I'm just thinking the reverb filter might be a little different. But it's the same kind of thing as the last one. And when you're using the reverb filter, bring it to a point that you like and only start LFOing it a little bit. You don't have to do it a lot. I only have it at one. It's really, really like quick. If it goes too far up or too low, you get really weird frequencies, like as if though there's a crazy delay on it, or even if this resonant frequency uh, knob was like super high. I mean, you could go that route if you're doing some like straight up rhythm, but for this, no. And that's it. The only thing that was different about this was a couple of parameters, uh, the macro control and the reverb filter, I believe. That, that's all that it was. Delay, diode, two distortion, all that's the same. So same kind of stuff. EQ8 on it to cut out frequencies and make it fit in the mix. And then uh, here's the modulation that I have for it. So the uh, pitch bend I used in Serum all you got to do is just come down here to the bottom left of Serum, click it, and then in Ableton, you just hit A, and then it'll show up right here, and you hit the plus sign right here, and it'll come down, and it's it'll be like separate so you can work a little bit better with your automation and stuff. It kind of separates and organizes it a lot better. And then I have Macro One doing stuff too. That's it for that one. Now we're going to go on to Base 3. So this one is a little bit crazier on the high end. This is like the main sound. Those other two were to help like support it. Oh, I guess I don't have that LFO on there. It's just normal. Oh well, that's fine. It sounds good. <laughs> At least I think it sounds good. So I think with this one, it's a little different. So I'm gonna turn all these off, turn them back on for you guys. So I used the squeal again. Ah, that sounds so funny. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. I feel like you could make a cool track out of that. So it, it's a lot of like low. There's not really mid, I think. It's a lot of low and high sounds to it when you're first starting off. But we're going to change that in a sec. So we've got filter, that same high notch with just using LFO one, making it wider, distortion, phaser, delay just a little bit, some uh, delay. This time I'm not linking it. I have the feedback up and it's uh, not hitting as high with a ping pong, but instead of normal like that EQ now it's giving it that yipey kind of sound <laughs> like a growl like or like a little chihuahua yipe, yipe. Yipe. so with this one the reverb filter I wanted it to go all the way up so in terms of like with the LFO going to the mix knob it's going all the way up because the main sound is very high and noisy and cut off I have at 83 and I'm pretty sure it's at one yeah so it's just like the other one but I have the mix going all the way up OTT compression and reverb and then macro one's doing the same thing as the last one so we've got yo man in the post-processing. 
So same as the last one, company OTT that I always use. And VR fat rack, make it mm, nice and fat. Yeah. And then some automation. Just like before. And that's like the main sound there. I'm gonna touch on this layer that I have here to really like emphasize that high end. Um, but we're gonna go through this little growl first. So take all these off. I probably should have taken all these off before starting the video, but yeah. Oh well, <laughs> we're all human. I forgot sorry okay so <laughs> we'll turn all these effects off i still can't believe i had that those santa pube hairs Ugh, gross okay enough with that so we'll turn the noise off so i just started off with a what is this a saw yeah brought it down uh two octaves i should probably bring these down to these random knobs so I'm gonna FM just like I did before. And this time I'm going up 12 instead of seven. And I'm going down one on the octave. Ooh, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, sync is at seven. And we got the flange filter. I kind of like this. Ooh. Oh no, no, okay. Oof. Okay, stop it, Mark. Stop. <laughs> okay, hyperdimension. Let's just keep going. So that adds some cool, like, uh, like, I don't know, like phasiness to it, which is really cool. And distortion with uh, the the pre-processing uh, EQ on it. We got phaser. That's cool. It kind of sounds like a frog now. Chorus. Ping pong delay. Oh, no. It's normal delay. And a reverb filter. Like, reverb filters and comb filters are so overused, and I don't like to use them a lot. But, I mean, that's a cool sound, and it's pretty close to his stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it. I like it. And then LFO2, this is going only to the reverb right here. This one, it's at 1 fourth, and the first LFO is also on 1 fourth. And then one cool thing, if you guys didn't know, if you hold Option on Mac, you can click it to the grid like this. And then we got the noise. So with the noise, I usually uh, put an LFO onto the level and then I'll go to the matrix and I look for the noise, which is this guy right here. And usually it's like this. And I just switch it to um, going left and right. And it helps cut it on the level. Cause usually you could, pr this is at a hundred, but it's only going up 50% when you don't have it like that and it's just that one arrow going to the right the hundred can go all the way over here so I usually do this when it comes to the noise and then we got yo man so it's doing the same thing as the other ones we're doing with their yo man's on OTT and fat rack and then the automations right here for the pitch bend and that macro all right so this is the interesting part. So I think that Moody Good and Leo Tricks have really cool sound design. It's really unique. And I think it's because they use sample manipulation or they post-process it like a really cool way using very basic sounds. They're very simple sounds that have really good harmonics. So if they do that, I'm thinking that they use something like a saw, a sine, I don't know about a triangle, maybe a triangle wave and they either put something some really cool settings in corpus they do something with corpus i'm thinking and they do something with like grain delay or 
like something else. There's something else that they do to basic sounds to make them sound crazy and different. Or it's that they use really quick or interesting, simple samples and they post process the hell out of it. So I went that route using the sample. And what I did was find a cashmere perk sound and I stretched it out a bit. And afterwards I did a ton of post processing to give it some like higher cool frequencies similar to like that screech that is in the drop which is this it's like it kind of sounds like a dolphin or like something scraping like a knife I don't know it's really cool or like glass so I just took this high perk hit That's it. It, it kind of sounds like a little hi-hat perk. But, I mean, you can hear it because I'm changing it a lot with the texture mode and transposing it, like, up and down. So I, I did that on a ton of these different hits. So what I would do is stretch it out with Complex Pro first, find, like, the, the length that I wanted, and then I went into uh, texture mode to start changing it. The texture mode is really cool, and I think Sudden Death does stuff like that too, which gives you like really cool sounds that are different. So once I found the flow and uh, it was going the same way they had it, I put on a Serum FX, and I think it's the reverb filter, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so we got distortion, chorus, and the reverb. and OTT, it's at 58. So I did that, I got another one. This one has da, 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 another reverb filter. Oh my gosh, didn't see that coming. What? <laughs> so this second one's gonna give it that, that like sound, it takes it to that level. There it sounds like a hit with like little shimmers. Right? And then we put this guy on it. Cool. Now that's like closer to what we needed. That one's at 51 hertz. And then we got the EQ just cutting. Yo, man. So it gives it that cool, like, phasey, going tons of different places sound to it. Company OTT. And the fat rack. So now you're you're actually getting that sound. All this other stuff here is kind of to help like support it. I just feel like I wasn't getting close enough and I tried to make the main sound just with this one. I couldn't get as close as I could, but once I added this onto it, it sounded a lot better. So layered, I think it goes really well. Um that's it for like those bass sounds there's this other part that I want to show you guys which is really cool and I think that a lot of people can do this in their production I know I'm gonna start doing it a lot more but just because I started doing this tutorial and I was thinking about how they make these sounds I started to understand that this sample in his track it's like a perk clank kind of reminds me of Sultan it's right here so I just ripped it out of the the song <laughs> Cause I could get it just like straight clean out of there. I was able to manipulate it over here and it actually sounds really close to what they have. It's like, it sounds like perk hits, but they're like robot perk hits. I just don't have that vocal where it's like, ah, ah. So, but this is what I did to them. And it, it sounds similar to what is going on with their samples. So, no, screw that. We don't need that. Um, but all I did was just use Complex Pro, Complex Pro and stretching it out. That's all it was. I used texture on some of them. 
we got one, two, we got two that I'm using it on. So this one I just used Complex Pro and transposed it down a lot. And I play with the formants a little bit. I think it's 48 actually. And this one right here, same thing. I just brought it down one though. Texture on this guy. I think I stretched it out first with Complex Pro. Um, yeah, I stretched it out. I didn't shorten it because it's at 377 BPM. And then I I consolidated it with Command J and then just put it into a uh, texture mode after that. And then this one right here. Same thing. It's got like that clanky noise now. And I think that's just a sample on its own. Um, I could talk about this too. So to give it rhythm, there's like this little like flutter thing in between the hits. I called it a thwop. <laughs> just thwop, thwop. Like that's that's all I'm getting from it. But you can hear it in the original. But there's like this little like rhythmic thwop. It's like right here. You hear so I was able to find it here and I just exported it out and it just has EQ on it but that now by doing that that made me think like to add rhythm to different parts of my own songs you can add these like little rhythmic hits like in between the basses or right before like a snare hit or even like a kick or something and it's going to make it flow a lot cooler and different, which is like really cool. And I think really important too. Where is it? And it's simple. It's just a little like thwop or flutter hit and the kick. I just wanted something punchy. So I went for the good old a five kick. And then for the snares, I used the must die snare. Like I needed something snappy and I layered them together. Cause his hit, it like smacks you in the face. And if you listen to his, just it just hits you. It's like a big like quack, like from a video game, like a fighting game or something. Whack, crazy. And then for the sub, I distorted it so much like I really wanted to get it sounding as close as I could to his so I just put a saturator on it and I drove it up with the drive and a sinoid fold And then this is the group that I use for like my low ends. I just EQ it so it fits. I tested it out in uh, mono, making sure it was okay. And then just a side chain of the kick. But it sounds, I, I got it to sound super close to what they have. Cause once the EQ is on here and cuts out the low end, it sounds just like it. I'm drinking my beer right now and I realized it's green. So you probably won't see this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh well, cool. It's magic. But yeah, I got like as close as I could on this. It was a lot of fun to do it. It was a big challenge, but I think the whole point of doing this in tutorials is to like, I don't know, challenge myself and I'm able to make some cool stuff to show you guys. So yeah, thank you guys for watching till the end of the video. If you like it, make sure you leave a like and a thumbs up, subscribe if you're brand new and please turn the notifications on so that way when I put out new stuff, 
you guys know right away and you can come watch it later on if you're busy in your day or you want to like watch it when you're actually in your studio at home and remember to leave a comment with your guys's favorite artist of 2019 so that way i can go through the comments and i'm gonna put everybody's names that leaves a comment about that into like a random generator and whatever that random generator picks i'm gonna be sending you a little christmas gift with my favorite ableton racks so yeah i'm not putting that santa beard back on that was terrible i think there's still some in my mouth but thank you guys for watching as always i wouldn't be where i am without you guys i have so much fun doing this and i'm so glad that i'm able to help you guys out so yeah until the next video happy holidays happy new year and i'll see you guys in 2020 later